All right, we are continuing with multiplying or with rational expressions, which were polynomials over top of each other to make a fraction. And if you understood what we were doing in the in um, the first part of this section, you're going to understand this. It's the same root idea. Multiplication really isn't too terribly hard. It's just an extension of what we already did. So let me get to the point here. So if you remember how to multiply fractions, let me see what they've done. Yeah, I like this. So what they've done here is they did the prime factorization of all the numbers. So here is the prime factorization of 10 over 28. And here is the prime factorization of 8 over 15. We've just broken 10 is 2 and 5, 7 times 4. Now they didn't go all the way down, actually. I would have gone all the way down. 4 is 2 times 2. However, the point is, once you have that, Multiplication of rational expressions or for any fractions, it's really like it's just all over one fraction bar. And then you just cancel the matches just like we did before. So the only real difference is we, we now have two fractions, but once you've broken them all down, you've got it's it's you can just treat it as if it's everything on the top over everything on the bottom, and you can just you've got more to slash down, but it's the same idea. So if we work with something like this, I'm gonna break down my numbers. So this is, you know how to do this. This is just old school fractions. But it's the same exact idea. So now, the way the book will show you, I'll just wind up slashing these down right where they already are, but I'll show you it like this. So, Okay, now, it's just like you've got anything on the top can reduce with anything on the bottom. And so we start slashing down matches. And just like we did before, put back anything. Anything on the top stays on the top. We have 2 times 2 on the bottom. We put that back together to be 4. OK, let me do another one. OK, now it is true that, that you can, well, I'll do it like this. I'll show you that when you're multiplying these, you can just make this one giant fraction bar. Now anything on the top can cancel with anything on the bottom no matter where it is. Okay, now everything went here. So I think it did. Hope I didn't mess up. Six. I don't I don't think I messed up. That's right. Yeah, everything went. Okay, so if everything has canceled out then what we need to see, we have to leave something behind. So we leave a one. So what we're really doing with everything canceling on the top and the bottom is you have 1 over 1, which is just 1. Now, here we have monomials. So these are monomials. we got x's involved, is all that fancy talk means. Now, what we're going to do, you know, if you'll begin to see this, or if this is really easy for you, you can just cancel down the x's where they are. But this is the way, if this gives you some trouble, I literally here have everything expanded. So the book did it for me, but it's all expanded. I've turned 2x, uh, prime factorization of everything. There's 3y's over here, breaking this down on the bottom. Okay, now once you have that done, we're going to start our canceling down. And everything will cancel, everything has a match, and we are left with 2 times 2, and that's our 4. So as always, you can pause the video if you want to. Now, when I'm doing these on my own, and you'll get the hang of it too, you don't have to break all this down. But again, I'm going to show you this way because this is what's really happening. This should be a P and that's a Q. Okay, now this just means like it's one great big fraction bar. So we're going to start slashing down. Uh, let's see. Okay, that appears to be everything. I hope I did that right. So now what do we have left on the top? We got a 5. We got a couple of p's. So I'll put those back together. That'd be p squared and a q. Oh, no, I don't. So I have 5p squared left on the top. I have a 2 and a q on the bottom. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to do another, especially after I, my writing on that one. I didn't make that look very nice, so let's try another one. So make sure you have it. Okay. Now, 
it doesn't matter that there, there are two separate fractions here. With multiplication, we can just treat it like it's one big one. And so let's start canceling our matches. Uh, that looks like it. So on the top I have a 2 times a 3 times a 2, so that's 6, that's 12. And if my handwriting isn't too horrible, I think I'm left with 3 Y's. And I am left with a 7. Yeah, just a 7 on the bottom. Okay, so the only problem here was that my handwriting is terrible, but I believe that is all what's slashed down correctly, and we get this. All right, now things are just going to get more complicated in the sense that we have to factor. Now remember, I cannot cancel x squared here with this x squared. Everything here is a number because it's separated by a plus or a minus. So I cannot cancel, remember my illustration, something like this. I can't cancel the 1 with the 1. Those are part of a number. They're not, they're not the same thing. I can't just individually break digits down and, and, and get rid of them. So these x squared, this is like a digit. I can't just get rid of it. So what we need to do is factor everything. So here I've broken everything down. And now that it's done, it doesn't matter. It's all like one big bar. You can cancel stuff anywhere, which I'm sure they've done for me. Well, they put it together as one big bar. And now I can start canceling down. And what am I left with here? I'm left with an x plus 3 on the top, 3, an x. Anyway, you can see it right there. OK, let's try it now. So we're going to break it down. This is why your factoring skills are so important, is that it's just going to be taken for granted now that you're comfortable with this. 6 is trickier than you think. There's multiple ways to do it. But if you're looking for this one, that's what you would need. And I hope you feel comfortable with the one on the top right here. Now, I'm going to break 10 down. You don't have to if that comes easily for you, but there we go. Now, it's all broken down. It's treated like a big, long division bar. And we can start canceling. OK, looks good. OK, that's all that we got left. So there we go. All right, let's do another one here. I'm going to break the numbers all the way down because I think it's a little helpful if it's difficult for you. If, again, as it, if it comes easily, don't worry about it. OK, I'm breaking down. Oh, didn't see that one at first. So I'm breaking down this one. Got x minus 6, x plus 6. Okay, I'm literally breaking down everything here. And again, as always, go back to the factoring videos if you need help with that. But now I can just start taking care of the matches. Okay, that's what I got left on the top. That's what I got left on the bottom. And there we go. All right, uh, I don't think that we're going to see that minus one trick that we had a video on, but I don't think we're going to see that yet. Just breaking it down, everything's the same. Now we can start doing our slashes, canceling, and yeah, the only thing is that there's a GCF, but that's of an N. Otherwise, this is really pretty much the same thing. Yeah, I don't think there's anything all that different about this. Just the, if you're going to make a mistake here, it's that you think you can cancel individual pieces, but you can't. That's like a digit. This is the whole number here, so I can only cancel the entire match. And I'm left with x plus 5 over x. Just remember, you can always stop it if you want to try it on your own.
Okay, I think I've got everything slashed down appropriately. Now, this is what I thought was coming, and I'm not sure if there are any other illustrations other than this. I can see that on this top left here, what's going to happen is that we are going to have the need the negative one trick. Sorry, I had to pause there to get a drink of water. So what I was saying is we need that negative one trick. I'll show you. I guess they've already done this one for me. So factoring everything just like we would, pulling out a four out of this. Now, when it comes time to start slashing down, do you see that I would love to cancel this 4 minus x and this x minus 4, but they're the wrong way around. So we're going to move that negative out front. They show it as a negative one. I like to just say it's a negative that goes out front. Same thing. And that allows me to reverse it, which allows me to then cancel. Okay, now it's going to happen here. So again, if you want to do yourself, go for it. Okay, I've got everything broken down. Now, let's just cancel anything that's already the right way around. Uh, let's see. Now, I sh yeah, I can make this 6, 2 times 3, but there's nothing else to cancel with. Okay, so we're all set, except we have this one that's the wrong way around. So I'm going to put a minus out front, and now it's going to allow me to slash them down. So I, I would reverse this if I wanted to rewrite everything, but this minus is going to make this a match, so I'm just going to leave the minus down there. And we've got 6, x plus 3, and I should be good. Don't forget, the minus is part of the answer. Okay, I'm sure we're going to see something similar here, but let's dive in. That's a three there. Okay, everything's broken down, but what we notice here is we've got this reversed 3 minus V. So, now, do you see that 3 and 9 are going to reduce just like we would do with regular fractions? I don't want to rewrite the whole thing again, but I'm going to just make that 3 times 3. It's the same as 9, so you can see that I can cancel those. Now, i got a match here and here, and i got a match here and here. So, all I have is that this is the wrong way around which is fixed by just putting a minus. And now I have a V over just a 3, it looks like. OK. I don't, uh, I don't know what trick is here. I don't see anything particularly tricky. So looks to be the same thing with just GCFs, breaking everything down. Yeah, nothing tricky here. That everything, so everything cancels. Just remember that if everything cancels, it's like there's a 1 over a 1, and that's the same as just getting a 1. Let's see where this is going. I don't know if it's going to be exactly the same thing. It might be. Okay, it's all broken down. I, I'm assuming we're doing this because everything's going to go away. Yep. So remember, everything goes away. It's like a 1 on the top, and then everything on the bottom leaves a 1. You always have to leave something, but 1 over 1 is the same as 1. Okay, I don't know if I really... I guess I'll do it. It's probably going to be the same exact thing. Uh, let's see, what would this be?
Okay, I have a feeling that everything is going to slash out of this. And I am right, which we have seen is 1 over 1, or 1. Okay? All right, so what's next is we're going to take a look at division of these, which is very similar, but we'll talk about it in our next video.